very good afternoon to one and all. This is Dr. Pradeep Uke, and today we are going to uh, uh, discuss about the uh, concept of uh, one of the new minerals, a uh, new topic that is a uh, it's a part of your minerals mineralogy, and the name of the mineral is a, a feldspar. Feldspar is a group of mineral. Feldspar is a group of mineral which having a different kind of minerals in this one. So right now, you most of the feldspar in the group are having a, a what we can say the orthoclase and this one all. This is the most abundant mineral in the crust. Feldspar is known as the most abundant mineral in the crust. Six of the seven most common element. Six of the seven most common element. Defined through the three end members. Six of the seven most common elements defined through the three end member: albite, anorthite, and orthoclase. So you have albite, you have anorthite, and you have orthoclase. This one comprises of two series. This mineral is comprises of two series. One is albite anorthite series, then you have a albite orthoclase series. Then you have a tecto silicate. The structure of this uh, rock, the crystal structure for this rock is tecto silicate. The crystal structure for this rock is a tecto silicate. The feldspar, which is uh, the feldspar, is substituted by Al plus three, Al plus three, for SiO Si four allow a sodium or potassium to be added, albeit orthoclase. The substitute of two Al three, uh, the substitute for the two Al three uh, for Si four, allow calcium to be added albeit anorthite. Then you have a feldspar group. Then you have a feldspar group. So you we have albeit anorthite series. We have albeit anorthite series. So what is the albeit anorthite series and what it does mean? So it's a complete solid solution series. When we are talking about the albite and anorthite series, it's a complete a solid solution series. Which is having a six mineral in it. The series is having a six mineral in it. The minerals, the name of the minerals are albite, oligoclase, andesite, labradorite, betonite, and anorthite. This is a different minerals you have. So albite is uh, albite anorthite is a N members. Albite anorthite is an N member of which is pure sodium and calcium. Mineral like you have a 90 to 99 to 0.99% sodium or calcium. The notation for this one is the notation for this one is uh, anorthite to albite. So feldspar group. What is the feldspar group? Feldspar group is a <laughs> group of the different minerals. Okay, so you have mineral and a group of mineral. You have a mineral and a group of mineral. So this one is a group of mineral. This one is a group of mineral. You have a uh, optical technique to distinguish between the plagioclase feldspar. You have optical technique to distinguish between the plagioclase feldspar. The Michael Levy method, the Michael Levy method, which is uses the extension angle of the twin form of the determined uh, anorthite to albite contain. Then we have a combined cars bed. We have a combined cars bed albite method, which uses the Michael Levy technique for the both sides of the twin form. Then you have a staining technique. What is the staining technique? Stain that attached to the potassium really well will highlight the potassium feldspar quickly and easily in hand of specimen or thin section. So feldspar group is a uh, feldspar group is having a albite orthoclase series. Feldspar group is having a albite to orthoclase series, which having a several mineral, which having a several mineral. <laughs> Like you have a alkali feldspar, like you have alkali feldspar, which is having a high minerals, high temperature minerals, like sanitinite. Okay, so high temperature, high T minerals means high temperature minerals. 
So we have a sanidine, sanidine, then you have an anorthoclase, monalbite, high albite. Okay, so this is a different minerals you have. Then you have a low temperature mineral, then you have a low temperature mineral like egg solution at solvers, chicken soap, separation. So this is a low temperature. So when if you can see able to see these minerals, if you able to see this mineral, you can easily uh, can you can easily see that this is a uh, monalbite, high albite, intermediate albite. So this is a different mineral. So you have alkali feldspar X solution. You have alkali feldspar X solution like male pools which pass solvers, male pools and pass the solvers. Anorthoclase that had formed through the liquid solidus separate to form orthoclase and low albite in hand sample play of a color caused by the lamina. Then you have feldspathoid group. Then you have feldspathoid group. It's a very similar to the feldspar and zeolite. So feldspathoid group is a very similar to the feldspar and zeolite. Group is include nephelin. Also, the framework include the silicates, but with the another a uh, a one substitution for SI. Only occur in a unsaturated rocks. No pre pots SI poor because they react with the SiO two to form the feldspar. Then you have feldspathoid min minerals. So you have nephelin, which is important in feldspathoid mineral. Then you have indicates the undersaturated magma. So this is how your nisu silicate. So independent SiO2 tetrahedral looks like this. This is a, a formula for the SiO4 tetrahedra for the. This is a. Uh, which is also part of the your olivine. Which is also part of the your olivine. Then. Uh, M1 is a row and shear edges. So you can see the M1, M2. And so olivine is a complete solid solution. Olivine is a complete uh, solid solution. Posterite to phyllite. So posterite to phyllite is a FO. And so FO means for posterite. FA means for a phyllite. Posterite and phyllite. So phyllite is a FEN member. Posterite is a MGN member. Then you have olivine occurrences. Then you have olivine occurrences. Principally in mafic and ultramafic igneous and meta igneous rock. The so olivine occurrences are principally in mafic and ultramafic igneous and meta igneous rock. Phyllite in meta uh, iron stone and some alkali granites. Posterite in some siliceous dolomite marble. This is some uh, sequences of uh, olivine. Then you have Monticellite. What is a Monticellite? Monticellite is a uh, nothing but a, you have a Ca which is more than M2, which having a high grade metamorphic siliceous carbonate. How you can distinguish phosphorite and phyllite? How you can distinguish between the phosphorite and phyllite? We have a petrographic microscope. We have a petrographic microscope. Which is having an index of refraction, which is having an index of refraction. So now, when you carefully uh, look at for a zoning, two be different in a different composition ranges from pleochroism, color slightly different. What is mean by pleochroism, which, which having a color is slightly different? Then you have spectroscopic technique. Then you have spectroscopic technique. Many ways to determine the Fe versus Mg. There are many ways which determine the F versus Mg ratio. Then you have a inosilicate. Then you have a inosilicate. What is the inosilicate? Inosilicate example of inosilicate is your diapside. The formula is. Ca Mg Si two O six. Ca stand for calcium, Mg stand for magnesium. So calcium, magnesium, 
SiO, SiO2O6. So this is a mineral. This one. Where are the SiO, SiO chain? So inosilicate is a single chain. That is the example is a pyrosilicate. Hydrosilicate is a single chain. Your uh, pyrogene is the best example. Pyrogene is the best example for this one. Then you have uh, then you have inosilicate. The single chain is a pyroxene. Then you have double chain. So pyroxene is a general formula for pyroxene is you have uh, MGFE MLAI that is uh, used as a X that will be used as a X. This is the how the pyrogen chemistry are looks like. This is how the pyrogen chemistry are looks like. The so pyrogen chloride or uh, ortho pyrogen and clino pyrogen solos. So ortho pyrogen, ortho pyrogen uh, is a solid solution between the estatine to ferrosilicate. Instatine to ferrosilicate. So this is what the this is what the your uh, ortho pyrogen is looks like that solid solution between the instatine and ferrosilicate. Then you have clinopyroxene, then you have clinopyroxene, which is having a solid solution between the dioxide and hidden bergite. Orthopyroxene and clinopyroxene having a different crystal structure. Orthopyroxene and clinopyroxene is having a different crystal structure, result in the complex versus. result in the complex uh, solvers between them then we have orthopyroxene then we have orthopyroxene so orthopyroxene and uh, equal to clinopyroxene solvers is a temperature dependent orthopyroxene and clinopyroxene is a solvers temperature dependent so orthopyroxene is the x solution lamella orthopyroxene x x solution lamella then you have an ideal pyroxene chain with the 5.2 m strong repeat and you have an ideal pyroxene chain with the 5.2 m strong repeat become distorted as a other cation occupy a di site then you have a double chain of the inosilicate first we see in the single chain now we can see the double chain pyroxene so trimolite or uh, we can say the empty pore group of mineral is an example for the double chain okay double chain uh, example for the double chain is a empty pole empty pole is an example for the double chain you have a trimolite which you have a trimolite then you have a hornblende then you have a hornblende hornblende view dark blue and sin al purple M1 rose, M2 light blue, M3 yellow ball. Then you have a inosilicate. Then you have a inosilicate. So, inosilicate is a double chain atom. Inosilicate is a double chain. So this is how your horn plane and all this one looks like. Then what is the chemistry of antipole? Antipole general formula for X antipole given here five where w is you may be a uh, your potassium or sodium that is your w uh, x is maybe calcium or uh, sodium or magnesium or iron that is uh, your x then you have a y y may be a uh, mg fe or mn or
so empty bowl will be looks like this uh, what the formula are you can see so now there are different groups of elements there is a different groups of elements like we have feldspar group of element which is having a most abundant mineral in the crust feldspar group of element is the most abundant mineral in the crust there are 6 to 7 most common element there are 6 to 7 most common element in this group which is defined through the three end members the plagioclase feldspar alkali feldspar okay so you have a uh, uh, albite anorthite and orthoclase albite albite anorthite and orthoclase this is a three different n member you have which is comprises of two series that is albite anorthite series and albite orthoclase series the the what is the crystal structure possessed by this feldspar is a tectosilicate the crystal structure of uh, by this uh, possessed by this one is a tectosilicate then you have feldspar group then you have feldspar group so feldspar group is albite to anorthite series feldspar group is albite to anorthite series which is having a complete solid solution which is having a complete solid solution the plagioclase feldspar so complete solid solution is a plagioclase so uh, feldspar six mineral is albite oligoclase andesite the six minerals is albite oligoclase andesite labradorite bitonite anorthite then you have an anorth albite to anorthite double duty n member that is a pure potassium or pure uh, sodium or calcium then you have feldspar group of mineral then you have feldspar group of mineral so we have a uh, feldspar group of mineral is albite to anorthite we have feldspar group of mineral that is albite to anorthite optical technique to distinguish between plagioclase feldspar Michael Levy method uses extinction angle of the twin form to determine the anorthite to albite content. Combine Karsh bed and albite method uses the Michael Levy technique for both side of twin. Then you have staining technique. Then you have staining technique. Stains that is attached to potassium really well like was CO NO3 to will which highlight the potassium feldspar quickly and easily in hand of specimen or thin section then you have a feldspar group of minerals then you have a feldspar group of mineral like you have albite orthoclase series okay like we have albite and orthoclase series several mineral like alkali feldspar high uh, temperature mineral like sanadine anorthoclase monablite uh, high albite so this is a different minerals we have then you have alkali feldspar x solution then we have alkali feldspar x solution so we have melt cool pass solvers line temperature uh, defining miscibility gap then you have anorthoclase then you have anorthoclase that had a form through the liquidus solution separate to form orthoclase and low albite in hand sample which is a uh, different kind of things are there then you have feldspathoid group then we have feldspathoid group it is very similar to feldspar and zeolite it is very similar to the feldspathoid group it's very similar to the feldspar and zeolite which include the nepheline which include the nepheline analkyline and leucite also framework silicate but with the another a1 substitution for si so nepheline nepheline will be a import important feldspathoid mineral nepheline will be important feldspathoid mineral indicate under saturated magma so then we have nisosilicate independent sio4 tetrahedra you have a nisosilicate independent sio4 tetrahedra olivine when we talk about the olivine olivine is a complete solid solution olivine is a complete solid solution the example for olivine is a fosterite to phyllite series posterite to phyllite series so posterite is having a more fe then the for uh, sorry phyllite is having a more fe and posterite is having a more mg so fe by mg and members you can have then you have occurrences of olivine then you have occurrences of olivine so principally in a mappic rock 
principally in a mapic and ultra mapic igneous and meta igneous rock you can find a olivine halite in a meta iron stone halite in a meta iron stone and some alkaline granite so how you can distinguish between the phosphorite and halite how you can distinguish between the phosphorite halite so we have a petrographic microscope we have a petrographic microscope then we have a index of refraction we have index of refraction which is which we seen by the careful of zoning which we have you have a careful of zoning to be different in a different composition result so then you have pleochroism then you have pleochroism color slightly different then you have pleochroism which is color slightly different then you have a spectroscopic technique then you have a spectroscopic technique many ways to determine the fe versus mg many way determine the fe versus mg same space group orthorhombic slight differences in unit cell dimension only then we you have a inosilicate then you have a inosilicate which having a single chain have a inosilicate which having a single chain diopside that is a calcium magnesium diopside that is a calcium and magnesium silicon oxide where are the silicon uh, chain so you can find this is your a single chain silicon this is your single chain silicon so this is your pyroxene chemistry how the pyroxene chemistry will looks like this is the orthopyroxene and clinopyroxene what is the orthopyroxene what is clinopyroxene orthopyroxene and clinopyroxene have a different crystal structure the crystal structure is a difference then the the rest of things are same so orthopyroxene and clinopyroxene have a different crystal structure which is result in a complex solvers between them so you have pyroxenite you have pyroxenite which is ideal pyroxene chain with the 5.2 ideal pyroxene chain with the 5.2 uh, amplitude repeat become a distorted as other cation occupy pi sites then you have inosilicate which is double chain then you have inosilicate which is double chain amphiboles then you have amphibole chemistry then you have amphibole chemistry so you can see how the amphibole chemistry is looks like see handout for more information see handout for more information again the great variety of sites again the great variety of sites and sizes a great chemical range and hence a broad stability ranges then you have amphibole chemistry then you have amphibole chemistry So you have a calcium, magnesium, and iron amphibole. We have a calcium. We have a calcium, uh, magnesium, and Fe amphibole, which having a good analogy with the pyroxene. Then hornblende and Al is a hornblende and Al. Okay, what is the how the hornblende and Al is looks like? Geologist. the geologist is traditionally used the term hornblende the term hornblende as a a catch as a catch uh, all term for the practically any dark amphibole now the common use of micro as a petrologist causing the hornblende into the end member composition and naming the amphibole after the well represented end member so you have a glucophen you have a glucophen then ribeckite ribeckite so this you have a different kind of sodic and this one we have a inosilicate we have a inosilicate how the inosilicate is looks like that this is how the clinopyroxene orthopyroxene clino amphibole and ortho amphibole so the pyroxene and amphibole are very much similar clinopyroxene and amphibole uh pyroxene and amphiboles are very much similar both have a chain of sio4 tetrahedra both have a chain of sio4 tetrahedra the chain are connected into the uh, stylized uh, one beam by the m 
octahedra high calcium high calcium monoclinic form have all the uh, you are offset in the same direction low calcium orthorhombic forms have alternating plus and negative offset cleavage angle can be interpreted in terms of weak bond in m2 site narrow single chain one beam 90 uh, degree celsius cleavage in pyroxene while wider double chain one beam is 60 to 120 degree celsius then our tectosilicate what is the tect so tectosilicate we already uh, seen that it having a, on a, a more tectosilicate form will more on a bit what we can say that this tissue wide coesite and this all are the of uh, high grade metamorphic mineral this one all are the high grade metamorphic mineral so you have when you have a low quartz and you have a so this is how your tectosilicate is look like then you have a high quartz at 581 degree celsius cristobalite tissue wide so tectosilicate mineral will give you the different so uh when we talk about the rocks so specific rock is having a specific minerals the specific rock is having a specific mineral like you have a, a igneous the igneous rock which having a mostly which mineral you have a magnetite ilmenite okay quartz feldspar quartz feldspar olivine pyroxene amphibole quartz feldspar uh, plagioclase and al 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 uh, plagioclase and this one so alkali uh, accessory mineral are mostly in a small quantities accessory mineral are mostly in a small quantities or in a special rocks so you have a magnetite ilmenite apatite zircon then different kind of spin you have then you have a pyrite and fluorite then the uh, when we are talking about the uh, when we are talking about uh, which, uh, the uh, which mineral we, when we are talking about the sedimentary mineral when uh, when we are talking about the sedimentary mineral when we are talking about uh, 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 this mineral what we can say the uh, sedimentary mineral so sedimentary mineral will be uh, uh, sedimentary mineral will be the quartz and feldspar are the uh, so sedimentary minerals are like quartz and your feldspar and uh, some other mineral okay so uh, so you have then you have a metamorphic rock also okay you have a metamorphic rock also uh then you have a uh, what you can have then you have a uh, metamorphic rock so metamorphic rock is having a different kind of things like a uh, uh, metamorphic rock is having a, a uh, what you can say the sanilinite and uh, green stone so green schist and so high temperature high uh, the mineral which is formed by the high temperature and high pressure the mineral which is formed by the high temperature and high pressure is or uh, is you can find in a, this one so this is about the min different mineral you have this is about a different mineral you have so you can have a different minerals like uh, what we seen so this mineral is also having a, a properties like a uh, physical properties physical property chemical property so what is the physical properties we have so on the basis of this property on the basis of this property we can identify easily which type of mineral are they so uh, there is a different properties of the mineral like you have uh, uh, you have what we can say the color so how what is the color is looks like that is the color of your uh, 
color of that particular mineral okay particular mineral so color is nothing but the a color of your mineral then you have a streak so after abbreviation after abbreviation what the mineral uh, what is the property that is shown by this mineral is known as your abbreviation uh, is known as your mineral okay uh, we are sorry uh, min known as your streak plate or streak of your uh, a streak of your minerals okay then uh, you have a harness harness is nothing but how strong the rock are. so whatever the rock you are dealing with how strong that rock is so if that rock is having a harness of 7 in that is a very good amount of harness you have if the harness of rock is less than 2 or 3 it is known as that you know, the rock is not that much so the hardness of the rock is depend upon this rock. okay then uh, you have a color streak hardness and uh, luster is nothing but a reflection luster is nothing but a reflection of your rock luster is nothing but a reflection of that your rock okay again uh, after the luster you have a different properties like you have a, uh, what we can say the seismic uh, or sorry you can have a, a Um, you have a, a fluorescence is also one of the property okay fluorescence one of the property then we have a uh, then you have a uh, hardness physical uh, so color then you have a cleavage also so when you cut down the rock when you cut down the any rock how it will be cut it how will be cut it so if it is cut it straight from the one of the rupture it is known as the what we can say the conchoidal okay or so different type of cleavage you have luster is a nothing but a uh, luster is maybe a pearly one so if you have a diamond if you have a glassy structure uh, sorry glassy luster you can have a different kind of this thing so uh, this is how you can have a, a mineral different kind of mineral you have and uh, Uh, in addition to this mineral you can have a different kind of properties of this mineral okay properties of mineral like you have a color okay you have a color then a uh, fracture then luster color streak specific gravity what is the specific gravity specific gravity is nothing but the what is the weight of this your rock or mineral what is the weight of your mineral whether it is a uh, uh, lighter than your water okay water is always take as a, a reference water is always take as a reference for the your physical property to see the physical property of the rock i mean the so color is easy to see but is least reliable property for id because the more the mineral the different mineral is having a same color like you have a pyroxene and olivine is having a same color so this is uh, the many color of quartz so this is a many color of quartz so it's not also like that that quartz is only occur as a, a white color you have a different kind of quartz also then you have many different white minerals then you have many different white mineral like you have this one then you have minerals that is come in a many different color mineral which is come in a different color then you have a luster then you have a luster so how mineral shine in reflected light how mineral shine in reflected light metallic is like a polished metal non metallic is all other then you have a streak so color of a powder form is mineral is a streak not always same color as mineral but found by rubbing mineral on a unglazed tiles then you have a cleavage so minerals split along the flat surface that is your cleavage can cleave into the one two or three direction this is your how the cleavage is looks like then you have a mineral which is break along the non cleavage surface then you have a hardness so mineral which is resistance to the bring scratches mineral which is resistance to bring scratches then you have more scale of hardness then you have more scale of hardness 
So compare uh, the minerals from softness that is a talc to diamond. Then this is what your Mohs scale of hardness is, looks like. Like talc, gypsum, calcite, fluoride, apatite, feldspar, and this all are the Mohs scale of hardness minerals. Then you have a talc is uh, the hardness of the talc is a uh, one. Gypsum is two. Calcite is three. Fluoride is four. Then you have apatite is five. Feldspar is six. Quartz is seven. Topaz is eight. Corundum is nine. And diamond is ten. So this is the different hardness we have. So how you can know about the difference? So uh, if the uh, if the any mineral or rock is scratched by the nail, if the any mineral and rock is scratched by the nail, that is your uh, the that is the hardness of two. If the it is not scratched by nail and this one, it is uh, having a six. Then you have a specific gravity. What is the specific gravity? How dense mineral in how dense the mineral then you have acid test so when you have a cso3 as a composition when you have a cs uh, when you have a cso3 when you have a cso3 uh, you can have uh, uh, when you have a cso3 in your uh, uh, composition when you have a CaCO3 in the composition, what you can say, uh, there is a only carbonate mineral are there. Only the carbonate minerals are there. Then, you have a different crystal structure. Not all minerals show crystal. When mineral do show crystal, uh, when when it show the first crystal, they used to have a characteristic shape. They you have a, a characteristic of shape. Then you have a quartz crystal. Then you have a quartz crystal. So. A different, uh, a different crystal you have, a different crystal you have, so different crystal is having a different minerals, different crystal is having a different minerals. This is a feldspar, this is a feldspar, graphite, so these all are the different minerals we have, these all are the different minerals we have and how this one will be uh, studied. Okay, how this one will be studied by the different possible uh, mechanism, different possible mechanism. These are different minerals we have. This is all from this mineralogy class. Hope you understand the concept of minerals, the how much minerals we have, how much minerals we have, different kind of uh, what is the different kind of mineral system? What is the different kind of uh, mineral system we can have the uh, for the this one? So thank you for listening this one. Thank you for listening this one. Uh, hope you understand. Hope you understand this uh, concept of this all and uh, um, if you have any question you can ask in uh, LMS or this one. Thank you for listening this uh, lecture. Thank you all.